Yeah. Okay. Hey. If, I got him. I got him. Years and years and years of interesting stories for you. In Portuguese, how you say good morning again? Bom dia. Bom dia, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Spanish is buenos dias. Buenos dias. Oh, buenos dias. Bonjour. Now you be, before. You, you're Brazilian, of course. In Italian, it's bonjour. <laughs> um, why are you here? When you, you said you was in Brazil, you, you had a, a good job. Well, tell, tell us the incident that brought you here. Well, again, uh, uh, as a black man growing up in Brazil, you would think, um, you know, that there is no discrimination there. You know, I had white friends, yeah. Asian friends. It's supposed to be the rainbow But nation, the real discrimination is actually with black people against black people. Yeah. You know, when I was in Brazil, they said, you know that rainbow nation, we get, they said, ah, forget it doesn't that. exist. <laughs> it so, doesn't exist. This because I was abused by a cop in 2006. What do you mean abused by a cop? You must have been doing something wrong. Well, cops I was smoking it. my weed, okay? Uh, on my way uh, home, okay? Mm -hmm. But it was just a, a joint. I swear to God, it was this size. He made me eat the joint. Mm -hmm. He slapped me in the face. Slapped you in the face. Yes, and just said, "Have a good day." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." I cry, of course. You know, my friend, oh, wife, friend was on my side. He didn't get slapped in the face. He didn't get nothing. He was just shocked that I could take that pain and move on. But what happened is, in 2007, I moved in to the United States and I never looked back. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's why so, I'm here today. So uh, w w what kind of, was he, a, what kind of cop was he? Was he a, uh, uh, P a PME, mm -hmm. police militar, militar police. Oh. oh. They came from the sixties from the dictators. Well, how did they stop, how did he stop you? Why did he stop you? Was it, was he was just passing by, of course, he smelled the weed. All, well, of, all the cars. He was walking? Or was, was no, he, he, had a, uh, he had a bike. Mm -hmm. Oh, those big, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. by cops. Yeah, yeah. Pass me, walk back, look at me, walk, where walk, is it? Walk, walk, walk bike back with his bike back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Okay, big where, where is it? I was like, what? I'm going to ask you just one more time, where is it? I showed it to him, it's right here, sir. Eat it. I ate it, he put his gloves on, those with dots, heavy gloves, mm -hmm. and just say, pow, in my face, Ooh. a black cop. Oh, really? Yeah. And he said, have a good day. Wow. And he just went by. And, that, and that's what made you leave? What happened? Yeah, you just one tear came down. I look at my wife friend. And he looked at me like, yeah, man. You got another joint? Dude. <laughs> and we were just on our way to the University of Sao Paulo. I ain't even be. So so how long? As soon as I graduated, I think it was like end of 2006. Went to the U.S. Embassy. Got my uh, F1 visa. And here I am, mm. you know, mm. well, first as an international student, 2007, then still as an international student, uh, travel agent person, Sophia Lee at Asia Classic Tours had the vision to hire me. Yeah. And that's how I know how to sell Tibet, uh, Angkor Wat. Mm -hmm. That's how I know all the Asian countries, like still mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. I can sell you Seoul, so from, from Ishion, your student, from your student days. just from working for two years with Sophia Lee. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And now I got sick of Sophia Lee and went to work at Chippewa in 2009. That's how I met my wife. Mm. She used to drink at work. I thought it was fun. You know, just, you know, it's a, you mm. know, just a New York style thing. <laughs> I proposed to her. But here I am. We married in 2011. I had a kid in 2015. You know, she stopped drinking for a year. Back, to, you know, to drinking. Well, well, and guess, here we are. Okay, you know, the I, situation I, today. I, I don't want to get you. Your I know. Don't get. Don't get well, the Let's go back because we started talking uh, before we turned the camera on about the. You said there's, a, you know, all over the world things things are happening. Myanmar stuff is happening. Uh, places in Africa, all kinds of stuff is happening yeah, in Africa. Yeah. I mean, this uh, upheaval or uh, uh, the United States is upheaval all yes, over. Yes. But you were saying that Brazil, it's about to explode. It hasn't happened yet. But can you? Just well, it's, it's about to explode because Brazil is a police state. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't do nothing. You don't sell drugs. You don't go to school unless the police kind of is on your side. Okay, mm -hmm. or you bribe them. The favelas, all of this cocaine that is being exported to mm -hmm. to Europe is because it's authorized by the police. The police right. is making money. It's called so, the militias. Yeah. Milicianos. Called over? Militias. Militias. Like, like, like military or, or, yes. or mercenaries? Yeah, military. Okay. So, for example, they work eight hours a day as a police, and then the other, uh, after six o'clock, they become a, a, a militia. So mm -hmm. they go to the favela to intimidate the people. They took the drug lords out of there, but they are the drug lords. But they're not selling drugs. They're selling security and protection to you. Mm -hmm. 
Why I need protection if I have police? Can I just call 911? Not only in the favelas, mm. you gotta call my cell phone. Oh, so you're, you're saying this is only happens in the favelas? It doesn't happen in other areas? Other areas that are civilized, you know, you may see a still a uniform cop. There's no uniform cops in the favelas. There is only the paramilitary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. They are protecting the favelas from themselves. Okay, I got you. Now, now, but you indicated that, that you indicated some doom <laughs> that's about to <laughs> well, happen. Well, the, the doom is, okay, uh, we have the Trump of the tropics, Mr. Bolsonaro as a president. Mm -hmm. And the other option that is like 50-50 right now is Lula. He was arrested for corruption, mm -hmm. receiving bribes, yeah. you know. He got a, uh, an apartment that one of those uh, realtors, construction yeah. management guys, gave it to him. Mm -hmm. So he was arrested. He just got, you know, free from jail, you know, some judge just waived whatever. So we have the bad option and the worst option, Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. Lula is going to win by 1% or less. Mm -hmm. uh, Bolsonaro will not give up power mm -hmm. and he will declare martial art. Martial law. Martial law. Martial law. Once wow. he declares martial law, the mm -hmm. vice president, which is a five-star decorated military person, the vice president, mm -hmm. he will take over the power. Mm -hmm. And the military will not give power back to the society for the next 10 years or more mm -hmm. until things settle down. Wow. So they're going to pretend that they are protecting the constitution against two rival political parties. It is going to name the left as communists mm -hmm. and Bolsonaro is insane and they're going to be the absolute mm. power. It's about hey, to happen. Hold on, even communists are a dated term. Don't they say socialists now or something like that? Oh, they still call them communists. Oh, they're, they're, Communistas. Oh, you're, you're like 30 years behind time. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 <laughs> no, Brazil is still like a problem this. Wow. So, but, 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 <laughs> it's guerrilla, man. But well, you're saying the people are going to vote, but it's going to be this close thing. But how, uh, well, how do you, how does your elections work? Well, elections are free, but they're also mandatory. Mandatory. And they are on Sundays. They are now on Tuesday. Oh, right that's, here. That's There's something. no option. Well, how do they make it mandatory? How, how do you make well, it Well, they will cancel your social security number and then you can I open a book, I mean, uh, uh, oh. an account. Oh. Okay? So, last election when I saw Bolsonaro was going to win, because I'm in the United States, I didn't want to vote. But you can cancel my social security in Brazil. I don't need it. I closed all my bank accounts already. I'm a free man. Wow. But uh, what I want to end is... All my friends here from Brazil, if you notice, they're all white. Mm -hmm. They're not black Brazilians overseas. Mm -hmm. They, as soon as you go to the U.S. Embassy and give you zip code, if you, they see you are from the favelas, they put a red mark. Wow. Put it away. Mm. They just put it away. Mm. But because I came from, because of my dad, my, you know, my mom, they went to the best university of Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. University of Sao Paulo, I had a chance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I put my zip code, the guy gave me a chance. When a black guy in the United States Embassy, he put the finger in my face like this. Mm. You'll be in trouble with me if you don't come back. I was like, what am I doing wrong? I have, I have a car. I'm a student. I have a job. Mm. I'm from a good neighborhood. I mm. have income. Mm. And you still put the, fin I mean, the finger in my face. Mm. You could have been in trouble with me. A black guy from America and close the window like this. Boom. Like, mm. what just does happen? You know, the guy said, yeah, congratulations. You got your visa. That's what it is? That rude person? Wow. Okay. So it see, was my first welcome to America. Dude, everybody, everybody keeps on saying, uh, you know, black people need to be united all over the world. But, but, and I guess, okay, fine. Great. I, I mean, try to do that. The, the melanin don't work. No, one don't African work. guy just told me, like, this is a waste of time. You, you guys are worried about the uh, transatlantic, whatever. This is just 500 years of history of Africa. Africa has 3,000 years of history. Mm -hmm. The Ottomans were enslaving them. Yeah. The Romans were enslaving them. They were enslaving themselves. Yeah. So how me going to have the audacity to say I'm going to be a pan-Africanian? Just stop. Okay? Live your life. Get your money and go. Oh, well, there are ways to do it, I suppose. Okay, so I just I, I was just fascinated. So, so, so you're predicting. I know. It's not a prediction. That's, I, what do you mean? I will, what, I will what bet you with you right now. There's going to be a revolution. Well, what, what do you, what do you, what's your evidence? What do you mean you know? Well, I have a friend that just moved in from Brazil. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's white. Mm -hmm. And he is the one that told me about this. Bolsonaro, mm -hmm. he's, he's, you know, every shot of COVID, he gets $1. He doesn't go to a bank in Switzerland. He goes to his pocket. Every Pfizer, every Johnson, every Covax, whatever it is, is a dollar more for Bolsonaro. Wow. Yeah. 
So the people want to kill him, but they what, cannot. But what's, what's Lula saying about this? Man, Lula is old. He's a corrupt guy. I don't even want to know what he wants to say. He just want to get elected. So he would never, you know, he would have, you know, uh, a private, you know, airplane, all mm -hmm. the benefits of being president. That's why he wants. Okay. He doesn't want to help nobody. I got you. Well, let's go back to um, uh, this let me I'm put sorry, it, I'm blowing your mind. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. See, I, li I live in South Africa. And what we say in South Africa is basically there are basic, but, but there are other stuff. But let's say there's three, yeah. there's three main gangs, right? Yes. There's the politicians, but they're not really a gang. They're the politicians. They just, they just do what they do. But yeah. the two biggest gangs are the police, which is not the biggest gang, mm. and the taxi association. Yes. They're the biggest gang. The taxi. The taxi association. Oh, yeah. They have all the vans. And that's all the, that's yes, right. Yes, but yes, you know, yes. if they say something, you know, whatever yeah, it is. That's power. Yeah. No, but, here, but here's the thing. Um, the, the folks, the, they, you know, the, the folks ain't taking it no more. They know what's going on. So young folks. Well, they're mobilized. They're, 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 they're voting system is different. Just, not, let me just say one thing. Mobilization doesn't help. Mm. Okay? Because my dad was marching in 1964. Mm -hmm. My brother was marching in 1992. Mm -hmm. My nephew and niece want to march in 2021. Mm -hmm. Marching doesn't help. Mm -hmm. You got to have a nuclear bomb mm -hmm. so you can go to the table and say, hey, I'm not going to use my nuclear bomb, but, you know, mm -hmm. do you guys respect me now? Mm -hmm. No black man in history, no African country in history, no blacks in the United States have access to a nuclear bomb. All quotes. Maybe mm -hmm. Obama had it, but I'm just sure he was watched every day not to use it. So we don't have military power. We don't have banks. We don't have an African bank, a Brazilian bank for black people. So black people don't have power, like in terms of money and guns and nuclear, nuclear bombs. If, as long as you don't have nuclear bombs, don't come in here and try to negotiate with me. Okay? Okay, look, I hate to end on that uh, sad note, but, but thank you so much for talking to me. Uh, uh, My pleasure. Should, should, should we code your name or something like that? I don't know. What, what, what do you want to call you? Uh, just call me RC. RC? Yeah. RC is good. All right. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome.